This is carbonated brown sugar no, water. No, no top gear. And this is Coca-Cola. To an impartial observer, these two products these some may corn. seem identical. But in the world of business, this little red can makes all the difference. I've never had just brown it's sugar so water before. That even mentioning it feels redundant. Their logo is about as recognizable as the sun, the moon, and the stars. <clears throat> Across the history of human commerce, no other company even comes close to their longevity and scope. Their product is available in so many markets that it's far easier to list the places that don't sell it. The Coke empire has penetrated all corners of the earth, and even a little bit beyond that. They Here's are the, the enemy of the business world. Milk. Architects of the single most valuable brand that society has ever known. When running a company, yeah, it's easy to Next believe just. that branding is everything. Take away this red and white label, and what exactly do you have left? Sewage. It's tempting to consider whether you could sell someone anything as long as it's behind those same familiar colors they know and love. Forty years ago, Coca-Cola was thinking the very same thing, and nearly paid the ultimate price. In my last video, I talked about Mac Tonight, the most successful ad campaign that McDonald's ever ran. The character was the spiritual successor to Mac's headroom, a memorable mascot for Coca-Cola, which showed up on television at around the same time. Mac's oh, I actually forgot was that's what it was. a bizarre character. The only thing I remember from uh, Mac's headroom of... was that famous hack, where the Mac's headroom took over the radio waves or something, or took over a TV channel for like an hour or something. What was the story there? Someone dressed in a Max Headroom thing took over a local station and he was never caught. It was 30 seconds. Oh, it wasn't even an hour. Oh. He showed his ass. Man, what the fuck? I don't think he showed his ass. Happened in Chicago, never got caught. He did? He spanked his bare ass on TV. What? I don't remember that at all. How is that the how is that like the the one thing I don't remember from that? He really spanked his his own ass. Huh? What do you know? Yeah, I don't remember that. I just remember him like taking it over and he's going. <laughs> That's all I remember. I didn't know he fucking spanked himself. Of events which led the prime to his license, adoption. The resub Dranged and Lexa. It's the 1980s and, and Coca-Cola is quickly approaching its 100th year as a business. The company brass aren't celebrating, however, as for the first time that nearly anyone can remember. Coke is in danger of losing its title as America's favorite soft drink. Bitter rival Pepsi Cola has spent the past several decades slowly chipping it's away at Coke's dominant Tempest. market share. Of the and Bobby By 1985, Pepsi was on the verge of the unthinkable, overtaking Coke as the leading cola brand. The consumer market on which Coke had built their empire was rapidly changing. The health risks of soda were starting to be scrutinized, and aging customers had begun switching to low calorie options like diet colas. This demographic shift meant that future sales of Coke's flagship product would have to rely on the younger generation, a generation who tended to prefer Pepsi. By the 80s, really? Pepsi had already That's started selling That's so shocking Coke to me. So I'm pretty sure, I think the stat is what, Pepsi dominates in the North, Coke dominates in the South, right? Because I never met anyone besides my dad that liked Pepsi more. Because my dad loves Diet Pepsi. If you preferred Pepsi, you're literally not human. I get the appeal. Pepsi is a less flavorful Coke. It's like a more watered down Coke. So it's for people that don't really like the intensity of Coke, I would guess. But they taste pretty incredibly close. It's just a matter of like how strong you want it, if you ask me. Like when you drink them back to back, you can really taste the difference. We did it on a tier list like a year ago. No, they really do. Pepsi is just a lighter Coke. Thanks, they resub screw and they get sub jade. But I know Pepsi is much more popular up north than it is in the south. 
So it always surprises me to hear that Pepsi was ever even competitive, but that's because I grew up in Florida. But I do know Pepsi owns more things than Coke outside of the beverage, right? Doesn't Pepsi Cola own like the majority of uh, like um, uh, snacks? Like most of the snack foods are Pepsi Cola owned? Yeah, I thought so. I'm pretty sure Pepsi Cola owns... You know, I'll just look it up right now. I mean, I'm on the fucking computer. I'm pretty sure Pepsi Cola owns, like, almost as much as Nestle does in terms of those kinds of companies. Like, they're huge with how much they own. Where... uh, How about this? Maybe it'll just say how many brands. Largest PepsiCo brands based on 2009... Well, here's like a really good list of just like their big heavy hitters. Mountain Dew, Lay's, wait, PepsiCo owns Gatorade? I thought Coke owned Gatorade. Doritos, Lipton, Cheetos, all the Quaker foods, that's all of your bars and shit. Ruffle, I didn't know Ruffles were that popular. Coke owns Power. who the fuck drinks Powerade? Is Powerade still around? Does that still exist? But yeah, PepsiCo, I think, owns more than Coke. I still think Coke brings in more money, though. Oh, thank you for the 10 gift subs, Morphs. Appreciate the generosity, man. And the resubs, Stolidy, and the Prime Suzanne, and Pogriella. Power Powerade ain't that bad, you cucks. But why get a power? Just get, like, a fucking Gatorade or something if you're, like, that desperate. What? Like, why choose Powerade? That's like walking by every water brand and choosing Aquafina or Dasani. It's like, doesn't compute. Yeah, how about this? Pepsi Cola versus Coke. Um, owned assets, maybe? Uh, I don't even know what I type in to find it. Oh, in 2018, Coca-Cola net worth and Pepsi net worth, net worth 69.6 and 99 billion. So, wait, in favor of Pepsi? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, like I said, I'm... I knew Pepsi Cola had more. Fucking knew it. Nice. With Coke hanging on to the kibbles and mayonnaise, restaurants and Yeri in the prime. If demon. the market trends continued, that lead wouldn't last much longer. However, yeah, I was wrong Coke about who brought in more money. Industry. I thought Coke still brought Coke in more money. Coke wasn't going down without a fight. That fight would come from their new chairman, Roberto Goizueta. Although he took over the company reigns at a very troublesome time, the Cuban-born magnate was no stranger to trouble. In the 1950s, shortly after getting promoted to head of Coke's Havana bottling plant, Goizueta defected to the United States in the wake of Fidel Castro's communist revolution. Over the next 30 years, he methodically worked his way up the company ladder until 1980, when he was finally promoted to the most influential seat in the beverage industry. Nice. Mr. Goizueta had quite the origin story, but a necessary one for understanding his mentality towards change. Thank you, some Kwan. For decades, Coca-Cola had marketed their product on tradition and permanence. They had built a mythical aura around their elusive secret formula, the very backbone of the company's monumental success. The formula's lineage could be traced all the way back to its inventor, John Pemberton, who then sold it Used to, to use real cocaine. Asa we looked that Candler. up. That was true. Within a decade, the Coke formula was selling in every American state, becoming the eminent national beverage by the turn of the 20th century. 
Not long afterward, company president Robert Woodruff would extend the taste of Coke to the rest of the world, ushering in the most dominant period in company history. By 1948, Coke controlled an estimated... Oh, here we go. So I did a little research and Max Headroom didn't spank his ass. It was the TV signal hack that had a look-alike spank his ass. Oh, man, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the hack. I... I, I don't I didn't remember him ever spanking his his ass. Obviously like the actual Max Headroom didn't like go on TV and spank his ass. It was the guy that hacked it as Max Headroom. That's what that's what we were talking about. They even didn't give subs Astral, I appreciate it, man. And yeah, it is true. We looked it up uh what a couple months ago. The original Coca-Cola formula actually did use cocaine. It was supposed to be like a medicinal drink for pain relief or some shit like that, so it used real cocaine. And it wasn't until like the 20s, 20s or 30s that they phased out the, act the cocaine and replaced it. I always thought that was just a myth, but it's real. I didn't actually believe that they used cocaine. 60% market share of the beverage industry, distributing their iconic product on a global scale. Millions of customers across hundreds of countries all enjoying the same formula that had remained virtually unchanged for nearly a century. It was Coca-Cola's golden goose, the real thing. Altering it would be He's like rewriting the Bible. And that's how the company thought, until Roberto Goizueta became chairman. By 1984, the company's mighty 60% market share had shrunk to just over 20%. Mm. Decades of complacency had allowed Coke's competition to get back in the race and Goizueta was poised to put a stop to it. After becoming chairman, he boldly one we announced that there would be no more sacred cows in the company philosophy. In the next few years, he followed through on that claim by introducing two landmark products, Diet Coke and Cherry Coke. Mm. It was the first time the company had debuted any him. new product under the Coke name. While both options proved to be quite popular, they only sought to further compete with the company's flagship product, which was still losing ground to Pepsi. Carrying the pride of one of America's most revered institutions, Coke was left the with prime no plastic choice. In, the massacre. in a time of Cold War tensions, Roberto Guizueta had to resort to the nuclear option. Oh, what a time. It's gonna be Pepsi now. The winning taste is Pepsi. It's gonna be, gotta be, gonna be Pepsi now. Damn, it, this advertisement kind of slapping. What a jam. A major factor behind Coke's declining market share was an ad campaign known as the Pepsi Challenge, a blind taste test between the two colas that appeared to show an overall preference for the sweeter flavor of Pepsi. While not exactly scientific, the campaign was undoubtedly successful at persuading many consumers to switch to the blue brand. This led Coke to conclude that the only way to stop Pepsi was to beat them at their own game. It was then when Coke's senior executives commissioned a secret assignment known as Project Kansas, where company <laughs> like scientists were tasked fucking, with concocting a uh, superior Manhattan formula. project. Soon enough, they had synthesized the ultimate flavor, one that could consistently beat both Pepsi and the original Coke in a taste test. With a potential new juggernaut on their hands, the company was now faced with a tough decision. They could release the new drink as a standalone product, and risk further diluting the already crowded Coke lineup. Or they change or the they formula. Could do the unthinkable and replace the cornerstone of their entire brand. Ultimately, the choice was up to Roberto Goizueta, who would look to his past for guidance. Years earlier, when he was in charge of uh, he's a mover. distribution, he shakes things had up. successfully boosted sales by slightly tweaking the Coke formula. He had already once committed the cardinal sin, but perhaps he saw it as a virtue. For Goizueta, the choice was clear. Coca-Cola, the product that he had sold for his entire adult life, was on the way out. And so, the Coca-Cola company was set to make the single ballsiest move in the Please entire history Captain of the Prime business, Vince. replacing the very thing from which they were named. As the story goes, shortly before the launch, Roberto Goizueta sought out the blessing of his predecessor, Robert Woodruff the man who had built Coke into the behemoth that it was. No one knows for sure what Woodruff really thought about the decision, 
because he wouldn't <clears throat> live to see it happen. Oof. In March 1985, Coca-Cola's most legendary executive passed away at the age of 95. One month later, the company launched New Coke. The events that followed were not nearly as sweet as they had hoped. Uh-oh. Coca-Cola is a pretty big but J. company. Jonah Jameson? Buying one of their products really isn't going to matter one way or the other. Where your purchase can matter is through a business like Bespoke Post. They're a subscription box service that helps Mr. out small Pib brands is from all across America. <laughs> Each Mr. month, they fine, offer a variety of premium goods ranging from outdoor, homeware, clothing, and more. Just fill out the online <laughs> quiz and discover which of these exciting new products may be right for you. Previously, they've helped me accomplish my dream of climbing the tallest mountain in Florida. Thanks to the spacious comfort of the Weekender travel bag, I was able to conquer the entire 15 feet of elevation. Now, they've agreed to sponsor my new dream of dominating the beverage industry. Luckily for me, Bespoke offers a variety of liquid refreshment options. And unlike other subscription services, you don't have to worry root about your I fucking falling hate root flat. Beer. I'll tell you right now, I just fucking sure hate root beer. The real thing. Thanks for resub, Scooby. Each month, you can preview your box, and if you don't like what you see, you can either swap it with something else or skip the month entirely for no charge. Yeah, I just don't like it. I for just don't like root beer. For my own purposes, I use the cast box Never to have. help me reach the bottom of the barrel in nutritional value. Now, it's just a matter of adding my proprietary secret ingredients, and voila! It's my sugary, addictive drink of the future. I think I'll call it Amp Energy. So visit bespokepost.com slash mplemon and use code mplemon at checkout for 20% off your first box. Probably Mr. Steel. And get started on creating your own secret formula. Oh, and no need to worry about Amp Energy. I'm sure that this fan favorite flavor isn't going away anytime soon. Maybe some CTR? Simply stated, my friends, we have a new formula for Coke. Yeah! Whee! Well, oh my god, wait, this was 1985? Wait, that wasn't that long ago, like, relatively speaking. I thought this was going to be, like, much earlier. I guess it didn't hit me till right now. 1985 is kind of, like, late into the game to change the For formula. For a real change these days, Coca-Cola is altering its 99-year-old secret recipe. On April 23rd, 1985, the new Coke Pablo. was rolled out nationwide. Over the next two weeks, the remaining supply of the original formula would be phased out of supermarkets and restaurants. The change was paired with an immediate Bill Cosby! campaign from company spokesman Bill Cosby. Initial sales uh, of the product aged very well. promising. Early data I love this new formula. were in line with projections. Really Roberto hides the Coisueta drugs. Confidently yes, stood by his no new more product, pudding. Already touting his decision as a success. The celebration was a tad premature, however, as trouble was brewing beneath Coke's triumphant hubris. Soon afterward, the company would find themselves struggling to stay afloat in a tidal wave of backlash, one that spawned right in their own backyard. Here's Prime, your big potato and the resub got your back in Maddie. Across its entire operational history, We're in Texas right now. Coca-Cola has so been headquartered in or near Atlanta, Georgia, the heart of the American South. It's a part of the country which prides itself on a distinct regional identity, one that often runs contrary to the rest of the U.S. For generations, many Southerners considered Coca-Cola as hallowed as barbecue in college See, football. I told you, Coke was always big in the South. It is beverage of Much choice, more than Pepsi. So much so that to this very day, many Southerners still use the word Coke to refer to all soft drinks. For as long as they've been in business, Coca-Cola has relied on the South as a sales stronghold. The fierce brand loyalty of the region may have led to complacency among Coke leadership, who developed an expectation that Southern customers would welcome any change with open arms. Following the release of New Coke, this assumption would be proven dead wrong. Shortly after the switch, the prevailing sentiment in the South was one of abject betrayal. For many, it represented yet another pillar of Southern tradition that had been surrendered to what? the Yankees. <laughs> what? Announcing the product smack dab in the middle of New York City certainly okay. didn't help this perception. How does that make With any change, sense? Coke had effectively alienated their most diehard supporters. Emotions among the former faithful ranged from indignant to irate. More than 40,000 letters of protest quickly piled up in Coca-Cola's office mailbox. 
the Coke hotline was inundated with thousands of distraught callers per day. A company hired psychiatrists who listened in to some of the messages observed some customers acting as if they had lost a family member. Needless to say, the reaction was much more severe than what was anticipated. Questions immediately loomed as to why the company didn't bother to run more tests in their home market. What little testing Coke did do in the South revealed a narrow preference for the new formula. Company leadership saw this slight majority as justification for the change. What they failed to consider, however, were the 10% of respondents who were vehemently against it. In a controlled survey, people can't influence each other's opinions, but in the real world, it's not that Thank simple. You some paradox. While most people were ambivalent about new Coke, those who disliked it really disliked it. This vocal minority would end up tarnishing the new formula in the eyes of the entire general Damn, public. Damn, people have always wanted to protest Even like anything, I guess. Even if the average consumer didn't personally some mind the switch, they likely knew someone who did. This common circumstance led to frequent cases where drinking new Coke could potentially place someone in an awkward social situation. For many, it was simply easier to avoid judgment and order something else. The influence of peer pressure would start to significantly impact sales, as consumers were now hesitant to embrace a product which so many found undesirable. All of a sudden, Coke was facing a major problem, one that extended far beyond the South. People from all across the country were starting to get the impression that for the first time anyone could remember, a Coca-Cola product had missed the mark. Ooh. New Coke and the swelling controversy uh -oh. behind it had become a national fascination. There's a saying in business Thanks that all publicity too, is good publicity, you, the prime but opinion. for Coke's new formula, it was simply not the case. Is Coke nervous? Not at all. I, we've never had more fun in our life. We, this wasn't a frivolous decision. It's something that we have worked on, John, over the last four years. In the weeks after the debut, New Coke had become easy fodder hey, for Hey, I know that guy. Board journalist. Uh, David Letterman. I know him because that clip of him eating Jennifer Aniston's hair and being super creepy keeps floating around every week now. I've never really liked late shows, even when I was younger, but... That's all I really know from him, is that he chewed on her hair and made it really weird. The media kept reporting on eccentric stories about just how far certain Fucking what? What do you mean? You guys, don't, you guys haven't seen that? This clip literally floats around on Reddit once a week at least. This is... It's... Uh, where is this like the highlight? I think it's this. Now, when you, when you go out, you're probably swarmed by people, overwhelmed by people wanting to come up and visit with you and be with you and take your picture and stuff. Yeah, once in a while that happens. Not, you know, it's not as bad as I think people assume it is. I'd but, you know, the there's same, always honestly. those odd... You need help. Those odd encounters. Thanks, you You know, there actually... I had inability. one kind of recently where I was in, at my gym in the, uh, in the uh, steam room. Really? And then two, two young women come in and... There's that moment of... Uh, okay, let me skip around. I thought this know, was just going to be the highlights, but it's coming. not. <laughs> All of me. And mm -hmm. then, you know, they asked them somehow... This is rude. Right? Somehow they whipped a camera out. And I don't know where the hell they're they hiding now. They got a camera. They have a camera in the steam room. Can I just try... Forgive me if this is rude. I just want to try one thing. Okay. Anton. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, yeah. Come on, David. Yeah. Attaboy. Yeah, that's, this is pretty much all I know of David Letterman. There was like a whole, I don't know where it is, but there was like a whole super cut of him being super creepy around women. At least I think it was women. It might have just been Jennifer Aniston, I couldn't tell you. That's all I think of any time he ever pops up on anything now. ...expressed their displeasure towards the switch. There was the story of Dan Locke, an avid Coke drinker from San Antonio, who was apparently so mortified by the new Coke announcement that he immediately went out and stockpiled 110 cases of the original Whoa. formula. Speaking of stockpiles... A few quick-thinking opportunists would use the Thanks hysteria the to their advantage. 
A in Beverly Captain. Hills man named Dennis Overstreet bought 500 cases of the old formula for God the of his wine business. After one month, he had customers lining up <clears> around <throat> the block trying to scoop up the last of his supply. Overstreet You're so the fucking dumb, that's the only thing that comes to mind when you think of David Letterman? Yeah, I don't like late night hosts. Thus, I never really watched Letterman, so all I know from him is that... How does it make me dumb? I just don't know the guy. Sorry that you watched Fallon and Letterman and whoever else. I, I never did. I just, I, I don't like the late night formula. The only one I've ever liked is Conan and Craig Ferguson a little bit. Other than that, they're all fucking boring. Than the old cases for more than double what he paid for them. The newfound scarcity of the old formula led many to scour some of the most rural areas for any in the prime re. When America's domestic supply was completely exhausted, a fuel oilist resorted to smuggling in the old formula from foreign countries who had not yet made the switch. Unfortunately, other forms of protest weren't so benign. One story out of Marietta, Georgia featured a woman accosting a Coke delivery man with an umbrella while shouting about how they had ruined the flavor. But by far yeah, the delivery driver made the formula himself was actually. a Seattle man by the name of Gay Mullins who would use $100,000 of his own money to found a new organization for enemies of the new formula. What? <laughs> what does that mean? The old cola drinkers of America would declare war against New Coke. He made his own his militia? His tactics included selling anti-New Coke merchandise, spamming the hotline with complaints, and organizing mass protests which dumped gallons of New Coke into the local sewer. At one point, Mullins even attempted to file a class action lawsuit against the soda giant. God, what a dismissed. worthless existence. The constant hijinks would attract a ton of media attention to the movement, helping to grow Mullen's army to as much as 100,000 strong. Is there a box there? While acts of dissent were small in scope and petty in nature, their influence was tremendous. Together, these minor demonstrations effectively counteracted millions of dollars of Coca-Cola marketing. For as much as Coke tried to salvage the image of their new product, the American public was sticking to their own narrative. It was only a matter of time before everyone saw new Coke as the most despised beverage in the nation. To make matters even worse, new Coke had crossed the threshold where it was simply fun to hate. During a baseball game at Houston's Astrodome, the crowd in attendance would infamously erupt in booze. And All this over a soft Coke drink. I don't like it the way it trunk. tastes. I'm suing. At this point, the backlash had far exceeded just a few hours. <laughs> That's like the most American it shit ever. It now the full-fledged cultural event. Part of the morbid curiosity that attracted people to the controversy was tied up in the novelty of seeing such a powerful company struggle. Coca-Cola was supposed to be the shining example of American excellence. They almost never slipped up. So when they did, people made sure to let them know about it. Lots of people who didn't even necessarily care about the product found entertainment value in rallying against a Goliath corporation a sub, who had chicken. fallen a bit too far out of touch. For many, New Coke became an issue Geist? of patriotism, with one Alabama reporter even cheese. insinuating that the whole idea was a communist plot to destroy a champion of American ingenuity. This theory wouldn't quite hold up after Fidel Castro, a longtime Coke drinker, published his own comments bashing the new formula. Ironically, Castro had arguably set off this entire series of events in the first place by launching Roberto Goizueta on his journey to becoming the head of Coke. After watching his bold decision catastrophically backfire, Goizueta's ultimate humiliation would Quick come text. from the words of his father who told him that the release of New Coke was the only time he ever agreed with Castro. In the first month after release, Coke's management remained committed to their product and tried to weather the storm. But by the He's end of the day, the situation was quickly becoming untenable. First, they said they were the real thing. Then they said they were it. Then kablooey, they changed. Kablooey, yeah. Huh? Now, I'm gonna try my first Pepsi. Kablamo. The company's strategy to poach business away from Pepsi was backfiring spectacularly. Shortly after New Coke hit store shelves, Pepsi saw a 14% sales increase, the biggest in their entire history. In mid-June, when soft drink sales typically rise, New Coke sales remain flat. Internally, Coca-Cola's officials were starting to panic. 
I made complaints. I don't know why everything's going pretty well. Product, the company would quietly alter the formula yet again, this time adjusting its acidity. It was clear that Coke's leadership was losing bug and faith in their vision. A few executives had already begun suggesting a return to the old formula. The last hope for new Coke was the product catching on in foreign markets. But after seeing the fiasco taking place in the US, Coke's international distributors wanted no part of it. Domestically, the company's own bottling partners were on the brink of revolt. New Coke was now threatening to dismantle the very structure of their business. Damn. With no other options, the company swallowed their that pride shit must have and like ass. to the will of the people. But one of us looked at the other and said, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what, what are we doing here? In the latest battle of the Cola Wars, Coke says it's bringing back its old formula. Within the next several weeks, the original taste, which many people in the country apparently missed, will be available again. I, While we read, I wonder, can you still get new Coke? I want to taste it. Uh, I can't imagine it tasted that different. Like, it was probably just like a marketing ploy from the start. You can still find some on eBay. Yeah, I know you can still find, like, Crystal Pepsis and shit, but they all expired and everything, and they literally are death. There's the Prime Ted and Rin. I was just wondering if there, if there was, like, anyone that somehow got the new Coke formula and remade it. Because that'd be the only way to be able to do it. And we listen, and you know the rest. They're both yours. The new taste of Coke and Coca-Cola Classic. Your oh, really, man. choice is back. On July 11th, 1985, Coca-Cola announced the return of the original formula, ending the new Coke experiment after just 79 days. The new formula oh, they did a reboot. to be sold gotcha. as simply Coke, taking a back seat to the rightful flagship product, now called Coca-Cola Classic. Following the controversy, longtime spokesman Bill Cosby would part ways with the company, claiming that promoting new Coke had hurt his credibility. This left oh, Coke man, with yeah. a vacancy in their marketing his spotless record, which too. would soon be filled by the aforementioned Max Headroom. Cuts the way, Coke. Despite the very entertaining ad campaign, new Coke's reputation could not be salvaged. By the end of the 80s, its sales had dwindled to just a few percent of the market, before the company decided to shelve it. In 1992, they attempted to reintroduce the new formula as Coke 2, which oh, went about as well as you may have imagined. The Bible 2. After a few years, Coke the new product Testament. would be mostly discontinued once more, only sticking around in a few select markets around the country. Roberto Goizueta, the mastermind behind it all, continued to swear by his creation. He personally drank the product until his death in 1997. Although he oversaw one of the biggest blunders in company history, his tenure was still considered a success. New Coke was expected to revive the Coca-Cola brand, and in a totally unorthodox way, it did just that, by making people realize just how much they enjoyed the original formula. The return of Coke Classic led to nationwide euphoria, Sales figures not only read I don't think that would be the case anymore. What the I feel like if this happened today, Twitter would never forgive them. They would still just boycott it on pure principle. So I guess they just got lucky in the time period here where people like protested and actually like celebrated when something changed, whereas now when something changed, it's still an issue because it changed. It's so, like if someone changed an opinion they had 10 years ago, it's like, oh, well now you're just pandering and I still hate you. So I guess Coke really just got, like, got really lucky here. ...brand had been doing prior to the switch. In just six months, Coca-Cola was selling more than twice as fast as Pepsi, solidifying their place as the top soda company in the world, a position they continue to hold to this day. Somehow, the biggest failure in industry history had directly contributed to its biggest success, a story so perfect that it led many to wonder whether it was planned all along. 
The incident I sparked it. a variety of other conspiracies as to the company's true intentions with the new formula. Some speculated that the change was a response to the Reagan administration's war on drugs, with Coke having to phase out the last remnants of the coca plant from which they're named. Whether or not this was the case remains dubious, but a far more likely explanation had to do with the company shifting from cane sugar to the far cheaper alternative of high fructose corn syrup. Strangely enough, Coke Classic wasn't exactly the same as Classic Coke. The Did returning formula had entirely switched to using corn syrup as a sweetener. Gay Mullins, who received the very first can of Coke Classic, reported feeling sick after drinking it. Many other astute consumers had their suspicions about the apparent bait and switch. But for the vast majority, it simply didn't matter. They had complained and Coke had listened, which at the end of the day is all anyone really wanted. In 2009, Coca-Cola officially dropped the word classic from their packaging, effectively erasing well, I actually forgot the it used to have classic on it. Coke's existence. The company was surely eager to I move forward from such shit. an embarrassing chapter of their history. Since then, the debacle has mostly faded away into a I'll distant do some memory. Ass. I was born far too late to experience the summer of new Coke. The stories I heard felt like something of an urban legend. A forbidden elixir which caused so much heartache that it was practically banished from public consumption. An artifact so unwanted that it became unobtainable. I've spent the past month trying to study it, and after examining just about every aspect of the stuff, I was still missing one crucial detail. For as much research I've done, the literature, the footage, and the data don't tell the full story. Cane sugar cola is 100 or 10 so much billion times better. To understand new yeah, I agree. The only thing left to do Cane sugar is just it. better. How do you even drink that? Because it's delicious. What? In 2019, New Coke experienced a brief revival after being featured on the hit Netflix series Stranger Things. As part of a promotional stunt, Coca-Cola would release a limited run of the 1985 formula. Only 500,000 cans were distributed, Not with only. a few winding up for resale on eBay. So I Crazy how big case, Coke is. and for the first time in my life, tried the flavor that whipped an entire nation into a frenzy. And to be perfectly honest, it was kind of hard to taste the difference. I it's fucking knew it would. because I don't drink soda often, or that I hadn't tasted a Coke in a while. But I could barely tell the two drinks apart. Funnily enough, even a guy like Gay Mullins, New Coke's most ardent critic, couldn't tell either. After finally experiencing the world's most infamous beverage for myself, I couldn't help but speculate about a pretty absurd thought. Does anyone actually know what Coca-Cola tastes like? It seems like such a preposterous thing to suggest. It tastes just like but brown sugar. Tells us that most people don't. <laughs> Kinda. Unlike what the marketing may tell. I you, guess I don't know. It's a weird question. Have consistently shown that the average person can't tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi. For most of us taste is just not our strong suit. Food marketing professor Joel Dubo found that incremental adjustments to soft drink flavor tend to go unnoticed by consumers, meaning that new Coke could have theoretically succeeded had it been gradually consolidated with the old formula. Thanks, Arisa, just this shit my pants. This is especially interesting, since many people today believe that new Coke failed because it was a bad product. But in my personal assessment, that's simply not the case. In fact, after going back and really comparing the two drinks, I actually preferred the flavor of the new formula. It was good enough to where I wouldn't mind seeing it return as a permanent option. The product itself was fine, and had it been executed a little differently, it could have been just as successful as any other Coke flavor. The problem with new Coke had to do almost entirely with how it was presented to the public. Yeah, it's true. They really Coke brute forced it. envisioned the product as the ultimate answer to the Pepsi challenge, but they only ended up challenging themselves. The very idea of replacing the most legendary consumer product in history was just too brazen for the public to accept. New Coke was unknowingly pitted against 99 years of marketing genius. And in hindsight, it's unsurprising to see which side prevailed. At the end of the day, all the research, focus groups, and taste I really think they irrelevant. taste pretty identical if I had New to guess. Coke never stood a chance for the simple reason that it wasn't the real thing. It wasn't Coca-Cola. But what is Coca-Cola really? Is it carbonated sugar water? 
is a 19th century headache. Is some JS3? I've got a feeling that for most people, Coke isn't even supposed to taste good. All it has to do is taste how they remember. Mm. There's something to be said about a product that has lasted longer than virtually any other. One that persists, unchanging from generation to generation. It's the comforting assurance that no matter how different the world becomes, there will be at least one thing that stays the same. Eh. That is the essence of the real thing. And no matter how good new Coke tasted, it was no match for just how much that old formula meant to so some mofo people. In tier one sushi. In consumer society, people don't have much. Decades of marketing have all but replaced sincere human interaction with a superficial facade of products. True, Coke collectors Take are kind of wild. Products and you erase the soul of modern man. When it was all said and done, Coca-Cola and the entire business world learned a valuable lesson. If you have a formula that's worked for almost a century, it's probably best to stick with it. Yeah. I still want to try a new Coke now. Max Headroom. Max Headroom? Ah, Cocologist. He sees us. Where there's a way, there's a Coke. Coca-Cola is the real thing. You know, more people prefer the new taste of yeah. Coke over Pepsi. Let's take him home. Good idea. Ah, yeah. Pepsi drinkers, now's your chance. Become a Cocologist. That's the way. Oh. Tastes like a flat Diet Coke. Yeah, Diet Coke's kind of actual ass. Diet Coke is like the most niche taste. Finding someone that enjoys Diet Coke is like finding a shiny Pokemon. I don't I don't know who drinks it. But then there are people that just swear by it. Or at least as I understand it, there are people who just fucking love it.